Welcome into YSN Live. Eric Hughes here at Bedford Trails up in Lowville. Joined by the Rockets football head coach, Coach Manuel. How are you doing tonight? Good, Eric. Thanks for having me. Great. So, you know, it's funny. I've been covering Lowville the last couple of years now. This is the first time, like, I'm actually talking to you. Yeah. You know, I think I've seen you in passing, uh, but I don't think I've ever actually had a conversation. You do a great job for us. Uh, you know, I know that our fans that can't get to games love watching it. You know, my grandparents, you know, included. Uh, and they always say you have a lot of nice things to say about us. So I think you're a little bit of a homer for us, but I appreciate that. Of course, man. <laughs> Thanks. It means a lot. But um, let's talk about this past game you just had against Campbell. You know, the last couple of years I covered your games against Campbell. You dominated those games the last two years. But this year is a little bit more suspense to it, even when down one point in the third mm -hmm. quarter. But you're able to pull through in the end. Um, what did you see differently from Campbell this year compared to the last couple? Uh, you know, they're much improved. You know, I think Coach King has finally established his culture. Uh, you know, I, I know him from my days at Paul. I know what he stands for. He's, he's an unbelievable man as a coach, but he's even a better father and a better person in the community to have around. Uh, and, and you see that. Those kids were coached well. Uh, you know, they're young. They had a sophomore quarterback, a sophomore running back. They made a lot of mistakes. Um, and, and we luckily capitalized. Uh, but to be completely honest, I thought they outplayed us. I, I thought that their kids and their staff deserved to win. Um, and, and I let our kids know that, 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 that those kids absolutely should have beat you. Um, and you, you get, we kind of stole one from them. Uh, and I think it helps that, you know, we've been successful. So, you know, we're kind of used to being in those positions. But, but Camel, man, they're a team to look out for. Uh, you know, if those kids stay bought in and stay showing up, they're, they're going to be a problem for some teams. Yeah, can you, can you describe the resiliency of your team during that game, like going down the third quarter? You were pinned back in your own red zone twice toward the end of the first half, but you got stops both times. How would you grade the resiliency of your team? Well, yeah, you know, the, the big thing was the stop right before half. Uh, they were about to go in to take the lead, and, and we stopped them on the one. They ran out of time. Uh, then we came out, and, and they actually, I think they, they scored that opening drive. Um, but, but offensively, you know, we felt, we felt good. We were moving the ball. Uh, you know, they, they tried to make us, you know, drive the length of the field. They took away our deep shots to, to Josh Pazel on the outside, our receivers. Uh, but at the same point, you know, we know we have a, a great back in Geno Perry. So we fed him the rock. Uh, we had a lineman that, went, that got injured in the first quarter, Brandon Harris. Luckily, he was able to come back the second, third quarter. And, I, you know, that stabilized our line. And, and we started to get a really good push in the middle. Um, and, and that allowed us to kind of control things there. And, and, you know, then we were able to hang on. I mean, we, we still had a couple mistakes, some bad snaps, some things like that. Uh, but, but in the end, you know, I, I thought we handled it pretty well. Whenever you guys play Campbell, is there some little add to it just because they're down the road from you guys straight up the hill? There's some more to it, or do you guys just kind of treat it like another no, it's, game? No, it's absolutely a different game. It's, it's one of those things where rivalry games are rivalry games. They're different. It's like, you know, I know you said you're from Struthers. Paul and Struthers is different. Poland and Canfield's different. You know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, you know, us and, and Camel over the last couple of years, us and Springfield, to, to us, those games do mean something else. We, we do treat them differently. Uh, then there's the other aspect of that our, our coaching staffs are intertwined. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I have, a, you know, a, a strong relationship with Coach King, but then we have other coaches, Coach Minnie and Coach Hunt that are on staff. Uh, you know, Coach Hunt at Camel, you know, he, he worked in local schools for a long time. So it's, there, there absolutely is something to it. It's, it's kind of, they're your neighbor. Uh, and, you, you know, you love them off the field, you know, but it, it's at the same point uh, on the field, it, it's a war. And it was, it was an ugly, sloppy game on both sides. Um, but sometimes that's how those rivalry games turn into and that, that you just have teams that just want to win and do anything to, to get that W. So the one thing that sticks out to me the most <laughs> when I ever watch a Lowville game is you guys love to play aggressive, you know, onside kicks, going for it on fourth down, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature. What kind of gives you the confidence to, like, go out there and, like, dial up those high-risk, high-reward plays every single week? You know, it, and it was, I was always told it was high-risk, high but one of the reasons we onside kick is because we give, off, give up kick returns. My first year, we kicked it deep against Springfield, and they housed it. And I'm like, well, what are we doing? You know, like, we're trying to get our, our best players off special teams so that they can get a break. We're trying not to get guys hurt, so then we're putting, you know, younger guys on there, trying to give them an opportunity. So it actually turned into – we don't want to risk a deep kick to, to give them a chance to return it. I mean, we, down in Toronto, we punted the ball. They returned it for a touchdown. It's, it's one of those things where I know it looks risky, um, but I'll tell you, Division Seven football, punting the ball is risky. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, my first year, we, we tried to punt our first game. You know, perfect snap. Snapper just dropped the ball, and then they had the ball, you know, in great field position. So it's, I'd rather just give our kids a chance to do the things we practice. I mean, you can only punt, you, know, you can only practice punt so many times, only see so many bad snaps before you're like, hey, you know what, we got a 6'3 receiver, we got a quarterback that can throw it 50 yards. Let's just do that and, and you know, take kind of, 
that, that risk out of it, and, and I get the reward. The reward's there. So that, that's really a lot of our thinking in that it's just hard to, to, to be really good at special teams at such a small school. So we just try to avoid doing those things. And it, it has worked out the last few years for us. Um, we have to get better this year. You know, we were 0 for 3 on fourth downs. We haven't recovered an onside kick this year. At the same point, we haven't given up one for a touchdown, so at least gives our, our defense a chance. So, I mean, that's a lot of our thinking. But even at the end of the game, you said that, that aggressiveness. It was we're trying to run down the clock, but then we knew we'd get single coverage and we could get Josh a chance in the end zone one-on-one. -on -one, and we took that shot and we scored. And it was one of those because, yeah, we could run the ball. They use their timeout, and they might have two minutes and, and only down a point. So, Absolutely, that goes into our thinking. That's our culture. Our kids know that's our culture, and it's just it, it's helped us survive, and that, that's all we're trying to do down here. Um, let's talk about your quarterback moment, Ricky Rolrich. <laughs> Obviously, coming to the season, very big shoes to fill. You guys had a great quarterback play the last couple of years from Vinny and Michael Blum. But Ricky comes in. He checks all the boxes, has a great arm. He can really thread the needle, can move out of the pocket when he needs to. And he's only a sophomore. What, what gives the confidence in him to go out there and lead the team, well, he, being as young as he is? Even when you listen to him talk, he sounds different. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, he did an interview for WKBN or somebody, and he was – we had established the run game to open up the – and it was like I was like a three-year veteran out there, you know, like a college kid. Um, so it's one of those where mentally he gets the game as a sophomore, and, and it's hard for seniors to get the game. And it's – you know, he, he understands Reed. He understands where the ball has to go. You know, last year when Michael was the starter, Ricky would be on the sideline next to Coach Vrabel saying, oh, you know, we got to make this read. This is open. This – and it's one of those things that, that he sees it, and obviously he, his, he has the arm talent to, to take advantage of those things. Um, you know, I think sometimes he, he tries to put a, you know, thread a needle in there when maybe he shouldn't. But at the, at the same point, he's a sophomore. He's going to make some mistakes, and he, he hasn't made very many of them. And it's one of those things where, you know, we have trust in him. We, we know we're going to be able to take some shots deep with him. Uh, if you can challenge teams vertically, you know, at our level, uh, it gives you a chance. And, and, and he's taking what defenses give him. He's challenging him when he should. Um, and, and he did a better job taking care of the ball this past week as well. Right. Let, let's talk about your next opponent, Western Reserve. So when you watch the film on the Blue Devils, who are a couple of the players that, like, really jump off the screen for you that you're going to be focusing on this upcoming week? Yeah, they got – I mean, they got some talent. Uh, you know, they, they were the team that had, had a lot of guys returning. It starts with uh, their linebacker, Nathan Hemberger, number 10. Uh, I mean, he was a kid that, you know, last year when we saw him on film, he was a problem, uh, you know. He, he's a kid that he's just physical. He finds the ball. He makes tackles. Uh, they have another kid, Jack Darney. He's been playing us for four years. I, sw I swear that Vinny Ballone was throwing interceptions to him four years ago. Mm -hmm. I honestly think he, he threw a pick his fre like to him as a freshman. Um, and so he's a senior now, and, and he's a problem on offense and defense. You know, last year in our playoff game, he was hurt, so, so he actually sat out that. But he's a difference maker. Uh, you know, the Prater kid at quarterback, he's a great runner, a hard runner. And, and I'm not even talking about their linemen. And they got – I mean, they have some big guys. Um, but, but those are the three that when you talk reserve, you've got to talk about those three because they're, they're three difference makers. They're three of the best players in the league. And, and they're the three people we have to account for if we want to have any success against them. Yeah, the, there's a – not just West Reserve. Like, this is a pretty loaded conference in the MVAC. you got Springfield, Jackson, Milton, Middle Ridge. A lot mm -hmm. of people say the Northeast State's the best conference in the area. But I always say the MVAC, I think, is just as competitive. Can you describe, like, the bad nature of yeah, playing the Yeah, MVAC? obviously, you know, the Northeast State has bigger schools. So, you know, pound for pound, if we matched up, they'd beat us. But I, I agree with you that I think that, that at our level, it's a very good small school league. You know, currently no team in our league has a losing record after four weeks. I mean, I, I remember before I took this job, it was out of conference besides Springfield, McDonald, and Reserve. The, the team, no team would win a, a non-conference game, whereas the past two years, it's almost no team's losing a non-conference game. So it's every week you have to be ready to play, and then you factor in injuries that you catch a team with a couple injuries, you got to take advantage of it, um, and it's no different this year. I mean, like I said, we saw Reserve against McDonald, and McDonald's a lot better than they were last year. And they weren't very bad. They weren't bad last year. It was they were young, but but they're much improved. So you know, every week's going to be a challenge for us, uh, and we just got to make it through the gauntlet. Yep, you guys are three and one to start the season. Had to bump the road there against Toronto, but so far off to a good start. But you do have those tough games coming up. If you could like pinpoint to one area, maybe your team needs to be better at, just so that you can sustain the success as we get deeper in the season. What would it be? I mean, it's the defensive side of the ball. I honestly think offensively we have enough right now. Uh, to be successful against these teams. You know, we, we're able to run the ball effectively. Uh, we're able to, to throw the ball vertically, which helps. But defensively, we got to get stops. Uh, we have trouble getting off the field on third and fourth down. 
Uh, we have done a good job getting some turnovers, but we got to just be a better tackling team. We have to be more disciplined in our coverages and reading our keys. You know, against Toronto, we had some blown coverages. Uh, but even in the run game, we don't always read our keys correctly, and, and that causes us to, to get out of position. And then that allows them to get some big runs. So it's, it's defensively we're not where we need to be. Uh, and even special teams as well. So we got to find ways to have some positive special teams plays every game. All right, one more question, Coach. <clears throat> So it seems like everybody's kind of waiting for Louisville to take that step back. You know, two years ago, you had Vinny Ballone. You guys are really good. People thought they're probably going to regress next year, but you actually get back to the playoffs. You get further in the playoffs. You win the MVAC again. People, what do you have to say to the people who think maybe you guys are taking a step back this year? Uh, you know, it's, it's up to the kids. I, I told the kids that last year. It's that our goal every year is to be better than the previous year. Just like every week you want to be better than you were the previous week. That's just the goal. Um, and, and our kids last year bought into it. And, the good, I mean, the good thing for us is we still have a lot of those kids back. I mean, it was well, – we graduated a lot of people. And then we look at it, well, we had, you know, five full-time starters on offense come back. We had three linemen. We had a running back that was in a committee. We had Paisel at receiver. And then you look, well, we also had another receiver that played. So, really, you're up to seven guys that played for you last year right. at a small school coming back. And, and one of the kids was Ricky Wilrich who didn't play. And then you see him on the field, and it's – Okay, well, that's you got eight quality starters now. Um, so it's we still have talent here. We, you know, we still have kids that, that work hard, that, that want to win. Um, I will say that there's some inexperience this year, uh, and, and, you know, we're not always doing the things we need to do to win. But, but I think we can coach it uh, to the point where we can be competitive with those big boys again. So we don't want to fall back back into the pack but at the bottom of the pack like we were when I first started. It's, it's we want to be near the top, you know, if – we want to go into week 10 with a chance to win the league like we did last year. Right. Um, Coach, thanks again for taking the time to do this interview. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you for the first, and hopefully we can do this again sometime. Yeah, appreciate it, Eric. Thanks yes, for having sir. me.